Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to go over a technique of generating ASCII art and kind of creating a retro uh, pop art look with it. Now, the cool part of this technique is really just from using an ASCII art generator, and I'll provide the link to the one that I used in this tutorial. It's ASCIIArtGenerator.org. That'll produce the text, but then we're going to use PaintShop Pro to do a little bit more stylizing beyond just the shape and luminance that's created by typing all that ASCII. Also, as we're getting ready to jump into it, I would recommend that if you have an older version of PaintShop Pro, this may not work well for you because the text tool was really slow and difficult to use, um, but Corel has made some improvements with the newer version, so I'm going to be using 2020, and there is going to be a heavy amount of text generated from this generator. So. You can experiment and try it, but if you're having troubles with managing that much text in PaintShop Pro, it could be because of the version you have. All right, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so to start off, we're going to be at the ASCIIArtGenerator.org website, and as you can see, it's pretty simple. Um, there are a few different ways that you can convert the image for this specific uh, technique. I'm just going to do the image to monochrome ASCII art. And from here, you can do choose file. And I got this image of a rocket ship from pexels.com. And then really the only other option is determining the width. And really what that's just saying is how many characters do you want to go across a single row? And, you know, the larger the number, the smaller the text is going to be with respect to your image. So it's going to be finer detail. A smaller number is going to provide less actual characters per row, and therefore you're going to have less resolution from that point of view. But this will be a number that you'll just want to generate and, and change until you get the right level of text resolution that you're looking for. For me, having done this before, um, I found for this image that I liked 100, but it took me a few tries to come to that number. And then all you have to do after you pick that number is click Start. So then it'll process your image, and then it'll create a new page. And then on this page, you'll see that it just presents all your image as just a bunch of text. So you can see how your image is replicated by just typing standard ASCII letters. So now to bring this into PaintShop Pro, what we're going to do is select all the text, copy it, and then paste it into a text tool object in PaintShop Pro. So now in PaintShop Pro, the first thing we want to do is drag our original image into the workspace. In my case, it's the rocket ship. Then we're going to create a new vector layer and then use the text tool. So we just click on any space and that'll bring up the cursor. And now what we copied from the ASCII generator website, we can paste into this text tool. And what you'll see is that text gets generated in some manner of size somewhere on the screen. So now we're going to need to select the pick tool and resize that uh, text box so that all of the, the letters and everything kind of line up, at least luminance wise, with our image because we're going to use the background image to um, allow the color to flow through where the text is and it needs to match. Now here you can see as I'm manipulating it, even with version 2020, with the amount of text that's involved, it, it's still pretty slow. It still lags a little bit, but it is a whole lot of text. So you may want to zoom in a little bit at times just to really get a sense of how the letters line up. The general rule of thumb is if the letter takes up more space, um, then it probably is an area where there should be higher luminance or it should be brighter, essentially. One important thing to note is that um, if the text, when it comes in, it's not perfectly aligned as a you know, rectangle like mine is showing, it could be because the font that you have selected is not a monotype font. Uh, Courier New is a pretty common monotype font, uh, monotype meaning um, that each letter, no matter how big it is, takes up the same amount of space. Like it's almost like each letter is given a slot and regardless of how big the letter is, it, it fits in that same slot. 
other types of fonts sometimes try to compress it so that there's as little white space in between as possible. But for this technique, um, you're going to need a monotype font. So now my text has a sort of rainbowish hue to it, and that's just primarily because I happen to have a gradient fill pattern in there um, when I first brought it in. So I'm going to actually switch that so that it's white. And then we'll see what how this is going to come into play, because we're about to make a mask. So now here we are. We have our text aligned with our image, and we have the text set to white instead of um, that rainbow color that I had. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to create a mask from the text. And in that way, we can have the color of the background image show through only where the text is. So to do this, the first thing we're going to do is create a new layer and fill it with black. So then now what you can see is just the black and white version of the text and the luminance has now been inverted now that we made the text white and the background black, whereas originally in the ASCII art generator, the text was black and the background was white. So this sort of luminance, if you will, matches more so what our original image is, like where the rocket plume is looks brighter than where the sky was dark. So now that we have this image, we can use this as the basis for our mask. And so to create the mask, we can go click down here in the mask menu and then say from image. And since the only image we have up is this one, we can select that. And then we want to choose source luminance. And we click OK. So now it's created a mask, but it's kind of hard to see exactly what it's doing here because of the way the layers are all set up. But this is our mask. And what we want to do is actually have the color of our mask show through. So if I were to duplicate the background, and put that underneath the mask, hide our original text, and then move the black outside of the mask because we want that to just show apart from the mask. Then you can see this effect. So to simplify all the crazy things that I just said, we have our group, we have our mask, which is just the text, and that, test, that text is filtering out all the colors of our original image and that is all sitting on top of a black filled image. And that's what we can kind of see. So now this looks all right, um, but it's kind of dull and it's actually pretty dark, primarily because there's so much black um, in reference to what little text there is. So we're going to try to bring this up a little bit. We're going to try to bring the the you know actual color and the image up. So a few things that I'm going to do is increase the saturation just so that we can bump up the colors a little bit. And then increase the luminance maybe just a little bit using levels. And most of this adjustment, if you look like it's really extreme on the original image, but because of there's so much black that it's trying to overcome, that's why it's really kind of having a minimal, of, uh, a more subtle effect on the final image. And then just to increase the contrast a little bit, I'm going to take the group that is the mask and duplicate it and then change its blend layer to overlay. And then now we get a little bit more like punch to the color. And, and in some ways, this really kind of gives it that overarching sort of retro look, you know, that it, it's almost like there's like a reduced set of colors that are showing at this point. And then finally, just to clean up the edges a little bit here, I'm going to use the crop tool to just get some of this extra black off. And that's it. So this is a little bit, you know, fun and different, and it's not necessarily specifically PaintShop Pro, but um, you can create some really cool looking images with ASCII art. I think this is kind of one of those things that um, was much more common back in the day when you didn't have all the fancy image editors and you wanted to create fun pictures, you could do it more manually uh, just by typing in and doing all that kind of fun stuff. But that's it for me. Um, as always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. And if you want to receive updates on when new videos are posted, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.